so I have um, this function. You can see it above in the definition. I'm going to write it here as well. f of x, a sub n, x sub n plus a sub n minus 1, x sub n to the x, x to the n minus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a1x to the 1, but we don't write that, plus a sub 0. So that's my generic or general polynomial function. And uh, I'm just going to slide that up and get rid of the definition. Well, actually, let's have the definition still. So note that it says uh, that's polynomial function with integer coefficients. So I can't have 2 thirds as one of my coefficients. And that's OK. We can work that out. And then a sub n cannot equal 0. They're just basically saying this cannot be 0, of course, because then this term would actually equal 0 and go away. And this now is my lead, uh, my highest degree term, changing the degree of my polynomial. And this is now my lead coefficient. So they're just kind of getting rid of all that nonsense conversation. Well, what if that's 0, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then all that shifts to the right. And then they say, then any rational 0 of f must be of the form p over q. Now p, the numerator, is a factor of the constant term a sub 0. So p comes from, those, from that number. It's a factor of that number. And the q is a factor of that number. So what we end up doing, sliding this up and giving a real example, is if I had a rational, excuse me, a polynomial function. Let's say f of x equals, uh, let's make it easy, uh, 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus, let's say 5. I don't held that too long. So 5. So from this number come my q's, and from this number come my p's. So in some previous uh, teachings, my students would pick up the ideas, oh, is that the P's over Q thing? Is that the P over Q thing? Um, and it's fine if you want to think of it that way. It's the rational zero theorem. And so what, how we develop the, the Q's is the, uh, the P's is that the P's come from the number 5 and they actually are factors of 5. Now the number 5 I chose because it's a prime number, so I only have the factors 1 and 5, but I also could have negative 1 times negative 5. Both of the, all of those, and actually this is negative, this 1 times negative 5 gives me negative 5. 5 times negative 1 gives me negative 5. So these are my factors of, of negative 5. And if you notice, I have positive 1 and negative 1, positive 5 and negative 5. So typically, we write that my p's are equal to plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 5. Those are my factors of negative 5. Same thing with q's. I also picked, again, a, a uh, prime number. So we only have some simple values to deal with um, and fewer options. And so I get uh, 1 and 3. It's positive, And negative 1 times negative 3. And if I group those together, I get my q's are equal to plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5. Now, the rational zero theorem states that my possible real zeros are ratios of p over q. And so what that does is my p's over q's could be plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 1, which just is plus or minus 1. My plus or minus 1 over plus or minus, oh, this was a 3, sorry, mistake, plus or minus 3. So I could have plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 3. And in fact, if you wrote those out, I could have plus 1 over plus 3. I could have plus 1 over minus 3. I could have minus 1 over plus 3. And I could have minus 1 over minus 3. But notice that this is 1 third. This is also 1 third. This is negative 1 third. And this is also negative 1 third. So, the, so two of them are redundant. So we end up having just plus or minus 1 third. Okay, uh, just to explain where all those numbers come from. And so now I've exhausted the combinations that this 1 has with 1 and 3. Let's look at plus or minus 5. So plus or minus 5 is the numerator, plus or minus 1 is the denominator. I get plus or minus 5 over 1. And then I get plus or minus 5 over 3. So in our steps to solving a polynomial equation, these 8 
Yes, it looks like there's four, but remember there's a positive and negative. These eight possible zeros are what I'm gonna try first when I either engage in synthetic division or long division. So my possible zero would be one, and I could do my synthetic division. I gotta go back and grab the coefficients. Um, three, two, zero, and negative five. Three, two, zero, negative five. Notice I didn't forget putting in my zero term. I was just double checking that two was positive. And so again, uh, carry down the three, multiply three times one, I get three, add, I get five. One times five is zero. I'm sorry, one times five is five. Zero plus five is five. One times five is five, and I get zero. And so one is a root. So I know that x1 is a zero, so that means this negative one, x minus one is my factor. And these numbers, if we recall from our synthetic division, that three, five, and five are the coefficients of my remaining terms. Since this was a cubic, this becomes a quadratic, so I get three x squared plus five x plus five. And now I can either factor this, clearly factoring by grouping because there's a coefficient of three, lead coefficient of three, or I could use the quadratic formula if it's not factorable and find out that I have x minus one and these two other binomials. Again, they could be complex or, or real roots once I start messing with the quadratic formula. So um, the magic of the rational zero theorem is the following. When I initially have this, if I wanted to start guessing at what the zeros are, I can have any real number as a possible zero. And so that means there's infinitely many real numbers. And uh, I can use the rational zero theorem to take infinitely many and cut it down to eight to try, okay? So now I, I went from infinitely many numbers down to eight. And I'm sorry, as much as you might not like that there's eight to, t eight to try, and I was lucky because I just pulled this problem out of my butt. I tried one first because of the, of the eight there, one and negative one are the easiest, and it worked. So I found the root, but trying those eight is certainly a lot easier, quicker, faster than trying infinitely many numbers. All right, so that's the rational zero theorem.